time. He doesn't want to call it shout outs. I don't want to call it shout outs. I want to be like, all right, now to our next segment dipping around the fire. <laughs> That's fucking retarded. <laughs> <laughs> now for our next segment. Called dipping around a fire, <laughs> dude. That's Next fucking sick. Hey, what's going on? This is Shanman XC, and welcome to the first episode of our newly titled podcast, Scrub Watch, for console players of Blizzard's popular first-person shooter, Overwatch. This is really for that niche audience that wants that podcast for console players that, you know, can't afford a PC. They want to play Overwatch on the comfort of their couch. So I'm joined by my um, my co-hosts, uh, Dash Nides, Tyler Rustbolt. G Skeep and Butts Ravenger. Uh, Dash Schneids, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, I'm Schneids. Uh, my gamer tag is Dat Schneids across pretty much all platforms, which is at this point is just the PS4. And Pornhub uh, as well. I rap <laughs> Chicago and I like to play tanks, typically some healers here and there. Anyway, nice, That's nice. Good. All right, go ahead, Grant. Oh, yo, this is g -Ski. I am also a tank main. Living out of uh, Detroit right now, the 313. Big ties with MM, you know, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it real. <laughs> He's my plumber. Like... <laughs> yeah, I know him personally. I'm actually only about five miles away from his, uh, his oh, old nice. house. So. From not, where eight not miles from. Almost eight yeah. miles. <laughs> Are you eight? Yeah, miles? I'm off of no, I'm off of eleven miles, so I'm actually pretty close. I'm a little bit to the west, but who nice. cares? Yeah, this is Tyler Russell. Gamer tag Tyler underscore Russell. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm wow, currently right residing now. in Houston. Uh I'll play pretty much whatever character will uh will get the SR up. Yo, what up? This is Bobby, um, aka Butt Ravager. The name describes me perfectly, and um, I'm a DPS flex, and yeah, mostly DPS flex. Out of boy. But, All right, and again, good. I'm Shan Man. Um, I play on PS4. All of us do. Some of us are just now starting into that 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 PC realm. Um, I've been there for a little bit. Um, and you know, we dabble in it, but definitely home is where the couch is. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, oh, let's go on to ball. our, uh, list of discussion topics. So how we're going to do this is we have five topics for this pop podcast. Um, our main one being at the end, these are kind of revolve around news items or just general topics, um, that you might find interesting from a console player. So, first of all, um, first topic is the Overwatch League. So, Grant, why don't you go ahead and start us off uh, by talking about that. All right. So, as many of you probably know, maybe not, Overwatch League started back in uh, mid-January of this year. It was created by Blizzard, who is the maker of the game. And they made it to showcase the best of the best Overwatch players. And it's they're all basically PC players, so... Sorry, console players. There are some fun tournaments that you guys can do. Uh, the regular season is 40 matches, and then they end up in the playoffs. And I think it's the top six that mm -hmm. make it to the playoffs. What, what are we in right to... now? Are we like in a? Are we an ex exhibition, or are we getting close no, to playoffs? So like right now, the way that they break it up. So since there's it's a pretty long season with 40 games. You play like a set of <clears throat> 10 games. Is it 10 games every? Four, there's four sets of 10 games, and you play two games a week. So it ends up being 20 weeks in total this season. I got you. So right now, we are in week, I believe, five. I don't know for sure because I haven't been following it. Yeah, like, two, yeah but... I mean, you follow a lot more than I do. Um, but it is a uh, – I mean, it, you know, overall, I think it's a very cool concept that um, 
Overwatch League Blizzard is supporting it as much as they do. It's definitely giving, uh, shedding some light on Major League Gaming as a whole. Uh, and again, like placing it right next to, you know, like you would see, yeah, like an NFL game or something like that. They, they treat it with that same sort of dignity. But yeah, Overwatch League, you know, you can watch it from the home screen if you're a console player. But otherwise, it's going to be primarily a PC gamer's um, sort of, I guess, goal. If anybody yeah, has a... ambitions that high, I don't know. <laughs> it's yeah. a great, great thing to watch if you're trying to like learn the game. Yeah, yeah more better, of that. You know? yeah. Watching the position of these pro players, how they don't go in one at a time and die and wait for everyone to group up instead. You know, yeah, I, I, I think just anybody, any, boy. any yeah. skill level can sort of take something from it. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. console or PC player. But, yeah, Schneids, why don't you go ahead and hit us off with the uh, next topic? All right. Um, let me. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, we, have, we had the new edition. I want to say it was last week that brought us the Blizzard World map. And I think it's the longest time we've waited for a map, but uh, the release of the map also brought us a bunch of new skins, many of which are themed um, are, are themed and based off of other Blizzard titles, uh, such as StarCraft, and I mean, you know all the popular titles, I'm sure, if you're listening to this podcast. But yeah, what do you guys think about the map? What are your first reactions? It's not available in competitive yet. Um, the map is, is awesome. I am not a fan of how they one-sided the Alliance, on the uh the first point but you know horde gets a, a little bit here and there that but yeah that protoss big gold statue in the middle gets me kind of hard <laughs> yeah there's uh it's to match the protoss orissa skin which is i think one of the cooler skins oh, available is, is that a new one yeah yeah there's a oh, bunch of new ones what, oh yeah i think oh never mind i think it, or, i think you got it and i had the same reaction and i just forgot but yeah, there's now some good there's some good stuff in That's there. That's cool. And all these skins are available at any time. They're not like an event box skin, so you can you can unlock them. You know, you have to unlock a hundred of them before you get one. And how about them their uh, how about them their Overwatch League skins though? That new currency. Yeah, it's just another ploy for Blizzard to get more money. But they give you one for <laughs> free, cool. Grant. They do give you one for free, and if you sign up for notifications, you get another one. They're okay. They're oh, just you do? Shit, I'm going to sign yeah. up for notifications. <laughs> Learning something new every day. I, uh, I don't mind Blizzard's method of uh, item distribution because you're not really required. There's nothing that impacts the game. Wallet. Yeah. There's nothing really required to be better at the game, which, I mean, there's a lot... EA is obviously getting shit for that, for that Star Wars Battlefront bullshit. So I do appreciate how Blizzard... I don't have to buy their mediocre skins if I don't want to. Yeah. I mean, it's fair. If you're, like, a big fan, then obviously yeah. you probably get, like, one or two. Because it's not that much. It's, like, $5, you get three skins, maybe. Yeah, it's better than buying like a hundred dollar like legitimate NFL jersey or something like that. True. Put it that way. Yeah, but that's I'm real. Not yeah, you can also get that's jerseys true. now too. But yeah. this is not a philosophy podcast, so what's real and what's fake not important here. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. All right. Uh, is there anything else on that? There are some cool <laughs> highlight highlight intros uh, as well. There's a cool soldier one. There's like a Anna roll uh, as well as a Winston. So I would check those out. Those might be some of the best of the bunch in terms of the new items. But I would highly recommend checking them out. Yeah. What about the meta that you think will be most run on the new map? We could talk about that. I think Cancer Comp will be run on defense on the first point, for sure. Cancer Comp always makes a, a good showing on every single map, Grant. The old <laughs> the old boys at Cancer Comp. I don't think so. Not in, uh, like, King of the Hills. You don't see a Torb and a Junkrat and a... Oh, oh you Metro. do. <laughs> and I guess in your tier, I, I don't know. Oh! <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> topic three, Rust Bolt. Why don't you uh, set us off, sir? Give us the rundown. All right, let's let's talk to those people that are listening that just want to know how to get that SR up, make some gains, break up. That mountain. We'll talk a little bit about Stop our experiences of how to rank up and even how to tank the SR and uh, oh, I just got what we think of the matter right now and what 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 do we think that you guys can do to uh, to rank up. Don't get so, hit. I think the <laughs> easiest way to rank up is just like watching either pros play or watching your how you play like a recorded game. And just re-watching it, because especially watching pros play, you really notice like their positioning and like what kills that they go for and which ones they don't. And that's yeah. one thing that really surprised me is that pros, like a lot of times, like a Lucio or like some pr- character will be fairly low, but it's just just barely out of reach and they don't go for it. And they, they group up with their team because, you know, that's safety in numbers. But always get high ground. Yeah, also. Yeah, for sure. I think I like you said like I think one of the most important things to just in general getting good at the game is just overall game sense and game knowledge and when to do what and like ult economy, knowing like when to use your ult, when the enemy will have ults, like I think so much people get wrapped up into like the actual mechanics of the game instead of just understanding like certain decisions that need to be made so i think that's a Mm -hmm. huge part and just like being able to rank up and start playing at a higher level i think it's really important also to to realize when you've won a fight and when you've lost it yeah when you need to turn on the jets and uh get aggressive you know yeah or when you need to be less aggressive. Yeah, I agree. And obviously, I I was actually gone for like 10 seconds there, but I don't know if you guys said it. I mean, group up, that's pretty obvious. I mean, yeah, every, group up. Going to a fight. every YouTube tutorial will tell you to do that. Use communication. Come oh, on. yeah, of course. Now, too. You have if you're on the D-pad. Tell your Genji who has a dragon ahead. blade, you have a Graviton surge. Don't just throw it in there and then Genji spawning. Like, and then... Obviously, pick heroes that are going to put you in a position to win. Like, yeah, don't. Obviously, you could potentially win with 6 DPS, but the likelihood of you doing so is probably not too high. I've, so, I've seen it been done. There's a certain push and pull to the meta that you don't want to be a slave to it, but you also need to at least give it some respect if you want to rank up. So. Obviously, pick and choose that's, the characters in your composition wisely. That's a good. That's a good uh, quote. That's I definitely yeah. With Overwatch, I think that you know the the sum of the parts is less than the whole. Because like as a team, like you can take up slack from your other team members not doing as well, but you have to work as a team. Like you all have to distribute that that like ability to win. You know. Absolutely. Like you can't, you can't carry, you can't hard carry. I mean, at lower ranks you can, but I feel like at higher ranks it's a lot harder because people punish you for every over aggressive mistake or every missed opportunity. Yeah, that I feel. You don't what take. do you guys feel like um, is the the SR rank that that becomes more apparent? Like you can't just yeah solo hard carry. Like what number, roughly? I would I'd say, say like thirty seven. Yeah, I would even say master. Thirty-seven to high di- high diamond to master. I, I would still gonna, say three k. I was gonna say like three k, like. I would say at lowest mid three k, like thirty-two, thirty-two hundred is. I guess I feel it depends like, on like how. I think more, I think higher than that, higher right, than thirty-two. I, don't I mean, know if you, you look guys at are just bro. flashing your big old SR dicks or. But no, I don't even have that I mean, high. I've never been that high, but if you look at pros who take a Smurf account and do like a bronze to GM montage or like something along those lines and they do it in a matter of like a week or two, it's like obviously they're carrying their way through that entire phase. Like they're carrying all the way up to 
where they're going to eventually plateau out. And it's not like they're going to plateau out at 3,200 if they're pros. So they're going to continue. Yeah, I mean, to most of these people who do those like uh, bronze to GM are pros. You know, that's like 0.1% of the population playing the game. So, I yeah. mean, I say 3K is like you can carry yourself out of that for like the average gamer. Yeah, True. I guess it just depends on your carry ability. Yeah. And what characters you play, because I feel like it's e- it's a lot easier to carry a DPS than, you yeah, know, a healer. Uh, like, yeah. Almost impossible. Yeah, Not for resistant. sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there is a the time most... where that wouldn't be necessarily 100% accurate, but yes, when... I would say as the game stands right now, DPS is probably the easiest class to carry as. When do you think it was anything different? I, I mean, I was gonna like mercy, like the mercy changes. Oh yeah, that's but true. We're, well, we're... I don't think it was really a carry. It's more of a for being over. Mm-hmm. Oh, I guess that is. I a mean, carry. That, yeah, that's the yeah definition yeah. of carrying. But um, but Not yeah, being you know, overpowered. I mean, we'll, we'll get deeper into that later, if you know what I mean. Um, next no. topic. So, unless anybody has anything to say about that, no, we're good. All right. So, what I want to do for topic four, uh, sorry, Bobby, I'm actually going <clears> to <throat> lay this one out. I, I knew I told you to introduce this, but PC versus console, do you guys want to talk about cost, performance, or community? Let, we should talk about, I mean, if this is for console players, I think uh, an interesting aspect would be the differences between the two, how, how a console player can transfer over to the PC Okay, yeah, and we can even talk about how, that. Even how the PC can make you better at the console, like playing Anna on the PC, for instance, for me, really helped me understand more about her positioning and her play style, and I took that back to console, and I mean, I'm not okay, okay. an amazing Anna by any means, but yeah. Yeah, no, we can, talk about, we can talk about the transition, and Bobby, since I stole your time to talk, uh, what, <laughs> I know you, you, played, you played some PC. How was your first few experiences going on PC from console? or console? On PC, like going to PC, having played, you know, hundreds of hours on a console. Um, I think it was aiming is <clears throat> harder at first just because you're so used to it, but you're able to make those, I think, those snap adjustments, like you can just flick like right where you want to. And you're able to take those quick shots when with console you kind of have to like slide. And it's a lot harder to take advantage of like a small window of opportunity where people can die on console. But I do think on console it's easier to, the movement's a lot easier, I feel. Because with the joystick you have have six axes. I agree. It's definitely a slide versus a flick. Like, I don't think every character translates over perfectly. Like, I play a lot of Tracer on console, and um, I tried playing Tracer on PC, and I got fucking wrecked. Because I have to, like, use my pinky, like, I have to use my my ring finger, like, it was just way too much, too fast. Um, But, like, Farah, like, I love playing Farah on PC. I think the... I think the flick on that, the accuracy is just much easier to, you know, guide my rockets and choose a spot, you know, to predict kind of where uh, your opponents are going. Yeah, I think if anything, it's more frustrating going from PS4 to PC because, like, you know how to play the game and you're going to PC and you're, like, kind of handicapped because you, you know what you're doing. Like, you can think about it, but when you're actually trying to make those movements, you're like... I don't know what I'm doing right now. You know, trying so to So do you think that shoot. like in Overwatch, what do you think like the percentage of positioning to aim is? Like do you think a person with uh, like the perfect positioning is better than a, a person with perfect aim? I would agree. I would say yes. Yeah. Because an aimbot, I mean like I've seen aimbotters in PC games all the time like against some of the top players like Seagull and them. And they would play Tracer and they had a, an aimbot. Or they played Soldier and they had an aimbot. But they would die to, like, a Reinhardt playing Soldier, which makes no sense. Why are you that close to a Reinhardt? Or Tracer would die to a Reinhardt. It's all about the position. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with that. So I think that position is, like, maybe not, like, 75-25, but probably, like, 
70, 30, maybe 65, 35 type of thing. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Your positioning, especially being like such a team-based game, is definitely um, in most situations uh, going to be more important than, you know, like Pierce. Obviously, like a one-on-one -on -one where you're not by anybody else and you're just fighting one guy, like that's going to come down to character choice and accuracy and reaction time, all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, you know, most Overwatch, you know, fights are going to be, it's going to come down to positioning. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, do you guys yeah. want to start the wrap up segment? What about the main topic? Of Did the we night? already discuss, oh, shit. uh, yeah, no. we have to discuss the meta here. That's true. That's or true. The... I, I'm so glad you guys are here because I cannot read. <laughs> All right, well, let's jump into our next topic. This is the main topic of the week. So, recently, we uh. had a mercy nerf from our <laughs> dear friend, Jeff Kaplan. Um, oh, yeah. Which, Was that this, a quaff? <laughs> this begs the question, are there... I don't know who did that. <laughs> are there truly no necessary picks in Overwatch anymore? Because before, uh, Mercy was kind of a... It was it, she was kind of a need to pick in competitive games. She had that double red. She was the worst. <laughs> yeah, uh, the you worst. know, like you would just Long always see game. mercy. Like <laughs> if if you guys all picked your six characters and there was no mercy, like you know, it was just Good very luck. disheartening to even go, you know, go to the starting line. You couldn't be irresponsible and get res, like or. You, yeah, if you didn't have her, at least. It yeah, was exactly. Mess. Like, if you were going in Zen Lucio, like, it was rough if the other team had a Mercy. Because, I mean, you know, they're playing with, you know, possibly two more lives on their team. So, um, I, like, personally, I would say, I would say no, there's not a necessary pick anymore. I think um, the mercy is still a valuable pick she still has the easiest healing like i grant you'd probably know this more off top than me but uh anna can probably heal more uh yes. life a second than mercy i believe but she's yeah. just so much moira better. too yes i mean but but mercy is just so much easier to you know i can hit r2 and just just sit and just you know heal a hog like, I don't have to aim. I, I just stay close to him and press L1 when I'm not close to him. Yeah, well, the tricky thing with Mercy is she has no offensive abilities, whereas, like, Anna can actually shoot the enemy oh, and she actually got do that damage. Pistol, boy. She got a but gun, you're not going to bring out a pistol when you're healing someone, whereas, like, Anna, if she just wants to shoot someone, she's just going to shoot that enemy and then start sh healing her team. Like, it's way easier to alternate. Same with Moira. Why doesn't Reinhardt get a pistol? Back and forth. So much easier than hitting, you know, I don't know what it is. Is it like the left D-pad and one on the PC to switch pistols? I don't think Reinhardt could hold a pistol. <laughs> Imagine Reinhardt, though, in battle. Like, it would be advantageous as hell if he had a goddamn pistol, like, in his, you know, waistband or something. I mean, that's kind anyway. of how Reinhardt Yeah, he is. could, he could carry, like, a cannon. Like, he has a shield, but, like, to be all offensive, you have to not protect your teammates and that's how mercy is but yeah mercy isn't as strong as ryan offensively that's why you, you i don't know about that always... one part <laughs> mercy's a strong woman strong female strong lead independent woman anyway there's also a moira nerf coming up uh oh really yeah uh i just learned about it today i think her healing orbs perhaps will do a little less healing or maybe damage grant might be able to elaborate on that one. i honestly have not seen this so i have to check that uh, out yeah i think it's in response i mean with the mercy meta changing up i think you got a lot more moira coming in and as a he as a frequent healer player i do like that because now it's like i always like to play the second healer i could play a zen i could play a moira i don't like playing mercy and now you know there's just more opportunity for other healer mains to flex so to speak flex yeah and, and i have to say like not having to play mercy not having that that burden um is nice i love being able to you know sort of flex other healers you know it's it's easier to pick up a, a tank or a dps when um you know everybody else on your team isn't sort of forced into playing mercy anymore so 
Uh, I think it's safe to say we all kind of agree. Like, no, there's you know, there's not but, that one hero that we that you need on your team anymore. There. Yes, sir. All right. Well, with that, let's start our wrap up section of Scrub Watch. The first segment is going to be a uh, a, a special little little deal called Overwatch Quiz with Gernt. So our friend G Skeep is going to ask a question, a Would factual question with a uh, solid answer I might hop in there um, to one random co-host, one person speaking, and they are going to answer with no help. Go. Peacemaker. So, <laughs> that is not no. the answer. So Damn. Grant, why don't you, uh, you take over and ask your question, boy? All right. Detail. So... Another one of your guys' favorite questions having to do with damage. I'm going to ask this specifically at Bobby. Oh, boy. So, who <laughs> does more damage? Taking aside, no, you cannot include headshots. Just one shot. Fully charged. Hanzo or Widowmaker? Fully charged shot, no headshot. Just a body uh, shot. Widowmaker. Scatter shot? Hanzo. I'd, just the primary fire. Primary fire. Did you say Widowmaker? I'd say Widow. Yeah. How, how much Widow do you charge to 100? I think Widow, Widow does like 120, 130-ish. Okay, what does Hanzo do? Fully charged, no headshot. 80? I, no, he does more than half a health bar. I think Widow probably does one, 140. Hanzo probably Ooh, does... Hey, does, Ricky. does, does okay, you're very close. But Hanzo actually does more damage. Hey. Hanzo does... Ah. Hanzo does 125, and Widowmaker does 120. Damn, that's but close. Widowmaker headshot does two and a half times damage. That's why you get the 300 damage. And Hanzo just does double damage from a headshot. Oh, so the critical... That's why you can still one-shot a May or a Reaper. Well, well good try, right. Bobby. Maybe next week. All right, fam. <laughs> Let's move on to the next section. This is going to be everyone's uh, personalized shout out. This can be Overwatch related, non Overwatch related. It can be about anything. So, who wants to start off with theirs? Uh, I'll go first. Give my shout out to Shannon, the man behind the podcast, the, the director, the recorder, the creator. Thanks, buddy. Uh, Here, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to the Dow Jones. Uh, things aren't looking good for the you right now, but I have faith. And uh, the new Han Solo trailer, check it out. It's better than I thought. I'm still very pessimistic about the outcome of the film, but this has given me a new hope, so to speak. Nice. Uh, all right, uh, Grant. What about you, sir? Uh, my shout out goes to a fifth grader in Austin, Texas, who uh, decided to pay a stripper to visit his middle school, and she actually <laughs> showed up. Nice. <laughs> Apparently, he uh, called her and paid with uh, his parents' credit card. What's the overall cost or something like that? Uh, that wasn't disclosed, but it was pretty cool. You talking low end or high end stripper? Uh, yeah, I don't know much about it other than she actually showed up and called the school, ratted the kid out. He's, he's oh, uh, did, getting did disciplinary she, action. Did she get her money? Uh, yeah. Did they already she... paid with credit card. Parents' credit card. Unless the parents, like, fought it or something. Did she, uh... Did she perform? No, she showed up to the school. <laughs> and was like, what the fuck? Everybody was taken into the auditorium and given a show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Best school assembly ever. Uh, Russ Bolt, how about you, sir? All right, I want to give a shout out to uh, those that are in the background while we play at all times, and it would be the pets of Overwatch. All of us have them except yeah. for Grant, but you can consider wow. Melanie a pet. Uh, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Uh, so, Me too. Abba, Pippin, <laughs> Brick, Puppy Kiwi, Otto, Tang. Melanie. The I got Brick right next to me. I'll I'll put up some pictures of them too, <laughs> except except probably Maria and Melanie. That'll be kind of creepy. Yeah, that'd be weird. Don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
She's going to hate this podcast now. All right. Um, <laughs> all right, that leaves uh, your boy. We can edit that out later. So, yeah. yeah, Melanie, I was joking. <laughs> we'll bleep it out. All right, so Schneids, I w- you actually stole mine. I was actually going to do it to the Han Solo movie, but I have oh, a backup. Man. So um, in sort of related news to gaming, um, Nintendo has disclosed, you all know uh, Toad, the character from Mario? Yeah, the worst character in Mario Tennis N64. They they have disclosed, and I'm pissed about this, that his... Is Toad gay? No, the mushroom on his head is, in fact, a hat and not part of his body. What the fuck is that about? I tell you, Obama... Okay, we need another hour podcast for this. (laughs) So... At least... That is fucking lame, and I will never be picking Toad again. Not that I ever wanted to in the first place. Sad news. Sad news. All right, and um, also to end this, so since this is our first episode, um, we have a small budding audience, or not one at all. But if we do get one, we will be announcing an audience shout-out in the next episode. So, um sort of in the same vein we'll pick one if if we have any um (laughs) to announce uh in this segment next time um you can comment in the youtube video you can send one directly uh to me i'll I'll probably post some links of where you can uh send that if you don't want to be public about it uh and we'll pick one and it'll be great so make sure to smash that like and subscribe (laughs) button hit that share button post it to your facebook twitter hit that bell icon Bell icon so you can get the notification. And it's down down below, you will see that Patreon. More Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> I'll link my PayPal as well. I mean, you don't even have to subscribe. It'd kind of be an inconvenience in some in some situations. I mean, but like you could. Do All right. So, so with that, I'm gonna wrap this up. Uh, again, this has been Shan Man XC uh, Scrub Watch Episode One. Scrub Watch. Um, Play aggressive. Um, Be the aggressor. Yeah. This, I've been with uh, G Skeep, Tyler so. Russell, Dat Schneids, Butts Ravager. Did I forget oh, anybody? Ravager. All right, nah. good. Sweet. All right, thanks for listening uh, over scrubs, uh, over scrubbers there, and uh, don't forget. Don't forget to tip your waitresses Bye. and <laughs> stay Gucci, my friends. Peace, and I was watching. Peace. It's just Tarby.